This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Morning this morning, and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It's a sports Friday with Eric Sawyer III. I'm just waiting for Mr. Sawyer to get into studio. Good morning, everyone. I have a quick notice from the Guardian. The deadline has been extended, calling all junior and senior high students. You could win a brand new iPad for the new school year. Enter the Play-Doh Alpha Design essay competition. All you have to do is write a strong and convincing essay on the topic, what does going digital mean to you? For junior high students, your word limit is 1,000 words. For senior high students, your word limit is 1,500 words. To enter, email your essay along with your name, school, and grade level, as well as your parents' contact information. Email alpha at platoalpha.com by September 30th. The winners will be announced on Guardian Radio next month. The winner for each category walks away with a brand new iPad. Again, the deadline has been extended to September 30th. It's the Plato Alpha Essay Competition, powered by Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Again, the deadline has been extended. You still have time to get involved. Good morning, everyone. It's a Sports Friday, so let's get into sports news. Here's a rundown of stories throughout the last week. We're going to take a look at the third week of play in the, the second week of play in the NFL and the lineup for the third week. Got some NBA news. I got a question on the table right away. What's going on? With Kai Jones. Let's get started. Story from the Nassau Tribune, 18th of September, 2023. BOC, that's uh, Bahamas Olympic Commission officers elected. While President Romel Knoll, Secretary General Deron Donaldson, and newly elected treasurer Dorian Roach went in unopposed, the remaining cast for the Bahamas Olympic Committee's executive board was completed during the election of officers on Saturday night. With the exception of one newcomer, Adam Waterhouse, from the Bahamas Rugby Union, all of the incumbents contesting their same positions or new ones were returned by the delegates in the Paul Farquharson Building in the Royal Bahamas Police Force Headquarters. Joining Knowles, Donaldson, and Roach were Roy Colebrook and Cora Hepburn with 16 votes apiece, Clarence Roll with 14 votes, Bishop Joseph Joe Mo Smith with 13 votes, Darcy Ramming Sr. with 12 votes, and Robert Butler in a 12 to, 12 to 10 in runoff with Catherine Ramsing Pierre after they were tied with eight each for the six vice president spots. One of the two women returned to office was Hepburn, a former national team volleyball player who represented the Bahamas Gymnastics Association. The elections were conducted by Kendall Isaacs, a lawyer and host of the popular sports talk show, Getting It Right, while NACAC president Mike Sands, Petra Haven, and Ethan Adley served as the observers as they counted the ballots casted. I got a story. It's a great follow-up after yesterday's show, Guardian Radio AM with Cecil Nuri and Ahmad Rashad, volunteered down at the Tom DeBird Grant Park. ITF officials, official meets with Sports Ministry and BLTA. This is in yesterday's paper, 21st of September, the Nassau Guardian. Bombers Lawn Tennis Association 
President Perry Newton and International Tennis Federation Representative Gustavo Granito paid a courtesy call on Director of Sports in the Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture, Kelsey Johnson Sills, and Sports Officer Adam Miller. Newton said the meeting focused on the work of the BLTA and the collaboration of the ITF to help build tennis in the Bahamas. Newton said the meeting also highlighted the role of the ministry in helping in the development of the sport and working alongside the National Association. He said the meeting was very productive. Granito also toured the BLTA's National Tennis Center and had an opportunity to meet with some of the facility's coaches and directors. The center, which is privately funded and operated, is yet to be recognized by the ITF under the updated ITF recognition program, which assesses facilities and its programs. Newton, Perry Newton, president of the BLTA, fully expects the National Tennis Center to receive ITF recognition. It's a very important move. We know that we have had a number of international te tennis stars, including Mark Knowles. So we hope to see the continued development of the National Tennis Center and the national programs. And to do that, you have to continue to develop your grassroots programs, your community programs, and your school programs to ensure that you can feed into a solid and sustainable national tennis platform. I also see this as a part of the national to sports tourism portfolio. Tennis is a big, big sport. We just had the US Open this earlier this month, ended on the 10th of September. I know Coco Goff took the uh, Women's Singles Championship. A uh, guy from Serbia, I gotta find his name in my notes, he was the Men's Singles Champion. Let's go to another story. Federation boasts vibrant beach volleyball program. Nassau Tribune, 19th of September, 23. After an intense month of training sessions, it was completed on Saturday. The Bahamas Volleyball Federation feels it is better equipped to move forward with a vibrant beach volleyball program. The BVF hosted a weekly training session at the Bahamas Football Association's beach soccer facilities at the foot of the Sydney Poitier Bridge. The sessions were conducted by visiting coach Augusto Sabatini and local coach Kirkwood Green. Sabatini, a Brazilian coach with 31 years of experience, spent the past three months in the Bahamas working with the men's and women's national volleyball teams before they participated in the NORCECA tournament in Suriname in August, before he concluded his trip with beach soccer. The emphasis for the beach soccer training sessions was to prepare the youth, junior, and under-23 players to participate in a series of international tournaments next year. A total of 29 players, including 14 females and 15 males athletes between the ages of 14 to 21, participated in the training sessions. Sabatini, who will leave town today for St. Lucia for one year for another program, said he was glad to implement the tra training program for beach volleyball, and he hopes that the BVF will continue it. Sabatini said he enjoyed his experience here in the Bahamas, especially with the facilities at the beach soccer complex. He has said the Bahamas also has some excellent players who can excel in the sport. Pratt sisters, Sternisha Pratt, 16, and Sternia, 14, both students of Leadership Academy, and Andiel Boleg, a 16-year-old student of Aquinas College, were among some of the female players who indicated that they enjoyed their experience. I really like like this story. I wanted to talk about it a bit, just for a moment. This is the sentence right here. Sabatini, who will leave town today for St. Lucia for one year for another program, said he was glad to implement the training program for beach volleyball. Sabatini works for the International Volleyball so an international volley volleyball association. He's gone on a one-year training program 
to St. Lucia. Just the, the possibilities in sports, right? Post athletic competition, post professional competition, post amateur competition, the opportunities are just plentiful for trainers, for coaches, for statisticians, for medical staff, for support staff. Uh, it's so important, if, especially if the government is going to take on sports tourism as a part of their tourism platform, that we figure out all of the, the, the crooks, all of the, I was thinking uh, English muffins people, is, it's early and I'm still hungry, but Oh, I'm full. I could see, sir. I am very full. I could see. We had ourselves a great time last night eating up some New York Giants, you know, me being a good San Francisco 49er fan. Yes, I want As you to know. you can tell by my watch. I want uh, you to know that I decided I wasn't going to look at the score. Yeah. I was going to wait till I see your face this morning. Yeah. To see if I could tell the yeah. pass. Yeah. 49ers are at it again. 30 to 12. We did We did some shellacking last night. Hold yeah. on. So y'all are 3 0 already? Yeah. And that's, and that's yeah. the only time y'all going to be up on us, you know. Who? The, sorry. Who's Good morning. Us? Good morning. To the Miami Dolphins. Sardians. And all the Sardians, Sardians. fans out there. Sardians. See, there's two sets of us. There's the Miami Dolphins. And then there's the Sardines fans. Yeah, damn. Wait, damn. Wait, listen to me. I'm so glad. I so. I can't wait for them to get beat because they can get beat now. Who? Them Sardines. You mean two and O Dolphins? <laughs> who they beat, man? Hold who on. Beat? Who you beat? mean two and O Dolphins who are going up against the Broncos? Hey, listen. This, this week they can beat the Broncos. There's a trap game right here for the Broncos. There's a trap game right here. This is it right here, right now. If they don't make it, if they don't beat the Dolphins now, it's a, a horrible season you foresee for them. Oh, oh no, the Broncos season finished, just like the Bears. That's fine. But I'm saying, this is a game that the Broncos can win right here, right now. Just oops, and they beat the and they beat the Sardians. And then all of the good Sardian fans out there, please stay away from me, you know. Block okay. me, you know. Oh. Delete me, you know. I come in for you. Okay, give me a second. Oh. Give me a second before we get to uh, NFL news. I got some NBA news. I got some WNBA news. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. All that. All of that. Let's see what I know. Hold on. But let's get to let's get to this caller producer. Good morning, caller. You're on the clock. Good morning. How you how you doing today? Good. Thank Very you, sir. Good. How you doing? Yeah, and I'd like to really applaud you, Miss Miss Green. So what I listen to, you seem to be one of the only females, and you use these words right, females that know so much about sports. And you know more sports than most women men. She does her homework, trust me. Hey, man, she does, she, she's well-rounded in many different areas. I must hats off to the girl from top of the hill, the East Street, at least from that family. Thank you, sir. But, yes, you know, sir. congrats. I, I like to, I, I mean, I played sports practically all my life, still. Mm-hmm. Back in the what, 80s, 90s, when it opened in, and I just I got a bad injury on the Eastern Parade playing American football out there with no proper coaching, no nothing, no God, a bunch of us out there doing foolishness, killing up ourselves. And then over these long life lasting injuries. Yes, sir. But you know, yours truly has played volleyball for government high, the government high, from 1968 mm -hmm. until I graduated in 1970. And then from there, I played night volleyball with the Paradise Island Giants. I was all your, also yours, truly, was on the first national volleyball team that left the Bahamas to represent the Bahamas, a bunch of us. Okay. I could call some names, maybe you too young to even be born to know. Sparky, you ever compete against my Uncle Stanley Mitchell? I don't think he was anybody to compete against. What you mean? It don't make oh, sense to be. Oh, it oh, don't make Aaron, sense to Aaron, go Aaron, up against the best? Aaron, 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 Hey, your uncle is more like a fellow go up to the, to the sports arenas and watch the game. Oh, no. Oh, no. Aaron, you're <laughs> my... See, Aaron, I can do it right now. Sparky, you know oh, what? Man. I want to say thank you because you pushed the sack QC rivalry right out my brain. Because look here, he's he good at stats and he got a good memory like you. Okay, yeah. And he good at track and field. He good at traveling to the Olympics and things and bringing back He's on. a long-distance sprinter. Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> he ever won the marathon from Montague Beach to the Prairie Ground? I believe so, because he told me he had to walk 18 miles every day to school in the in the salt hail. He said back yeah, then... People he, he like Cleese, some of them just used to walk to Eastern Sea, and they didn't have to run all that, but they used to win all the long distance race and things. <laughs> Leslie Miller learned to run a name from his older brother, Hardy Miller. That's where Stanley learned to run from, Daddy-O. 
Yeah, I guess, right, I know. I was going to say that this thing has been going around. Right now, I have an injury that's been plaguing me from back in 1990 to 1970, something went back in there. Where I went to tackle uh, Whitney, Whitney Roll coming up the, 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 the north side of Eastern Parade. I said, he ran past me. I go on down to tackle him by the knee. When I wake up, my old man was standing over me in recovery room in PMH. Hey, Sparky, I got to go. <laughs> Sparky, i glad you made it. i glad you made it. I once took on a pan of macaroni like that, Sparky. I did not make it, and that ended my sports career right there. But Sparky, what you raised for me just now is something that was also raised yesterday. You know, you guys had a rich... He's, you had a rich culture of appreciation for sports and what it yeah, could do sports for you. Was, sports was everything. I remember, everything. I remember being an early teen, having to run home from uh, the basketball court next to Dick Moss Club because they used to have night games. They, I mean, Johnson Road had an a, a awesome team in a vibrant night league system. Sports was a tenure, and I, I sad that it has fallen away the way that it has. I got a text for you. I'm just going to give it to you now. Great show as usual. Tell that guess that the 49er gang was never the same after Joe Man Montana and Steve Young left. Those were the good, good old days. It looked like the, Steel, um, the 49ers trying to revive that excitement. I'm just going to read off some quick headlines. Triathlete Cammy Roach bringing home two silver medals from the Caribbean Elite Juniors Road Cycling Championships in the Dominican Republic. Uh, two silver medals. Competed in the uh, junior girls, 17 to 18 age group division, in the time trials. Uh, she's from Windsor School at Albany. Byron Musgrove Jr. competing in the junior boys race was 10th. The boys juvenile 15 to 16 division, Aiden Bain, was 11th. His Grand Bahama teammate, Lonnie Duncan, good to see you again. Uh, also, just ahead of Lonnie Duncan, I think he came in in 12th. Angelia Knowles got 5th in the girls race. Roach clock, two hours, seven minutes, one second for a second, silver. Mm. Can't on bad. These mm. young people can't, can't on bad. That. I can't walk that fast. Look here. The, mo <laughs> hey, the most important part of this story, Byron Musgrove Sr., the Secretary General of the Bahamas Cycling Federation, said they intend to seek their own training and competition facility so they can prepare their cyclists to compete in the road race, track, time trials, and mountain biking. I'm all for it. Another quick headline, Team Bahamas off to CAC Championship. The Bahamas Bodybuilding Wellness and Fitness Federation has sent a 14-member team to Aruba to participate in the Golden Anniversary 50th International Federation of Bodybuilding and Fitness. They didn't go 2021. Oh, wait, they went in 2021, came home with eight medals, but were unable to compete in 2022. Good luck. Another quick story, Anya James becomes the uh, president of Bahamas Football Association after eight years as an executive vice president. Um, there's been a focus on reviving the women's team, national team. They had a good run La uh, Wednesday night. They got beat 6-1 by Puerto Rico, but it's a very new team rebuilding after a number of years. And we say, you guys, keep going. Mr. S uh, Soy, I almost put on my tape to get on the plane to go to Grenada with them because I think they need some body. They need some body yeah, they need on the some field. Body. And I yeah. am that yeah, somebody. Some body. Yeah, 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 that's a line. That's a line. That's a line that I've, I, I like to crack joke on all the time. You know, yeah. when, my, when my mother asks, you know, like she'll just be in the kitchen, somebody need to go to the store to get some um, bread. We all out of bread, you know. Yeah. And I like to haul in the hallway. Somebody! Oi! Somebody! <laughs> Where you is, babe? Hey, somebody! Mommy say go to the store. <laughs> well, they need a big body like yeah. me. Yeah. I think uh, part of the, the team's growth will be expanding bodies, right? L getting bigger mm -hmm. and learning to use your small frame and expand to take up more space on the field. Another quick headline, okay. Listen, the senior men's basketball team dropped one point from 56 to 57. We were all expecting the senior team to elevate in the rankings, especially after we gained 12.7 points since the last official ranking, right? Went from 199.4 to whatever adding 12.7 is. 
But here we are, dropped down to 57. People are stunned because, you know, we won the entire bracket that we were just in. We won that tournament, the FIBA Americas. Yeah, yeah, that's a bunch of... That's, that's a bunch of... We beat the number the four team twice in the, in the home court. Yeah, yeah, in the world, but still... There's a there's a juggle when it comes to the comes to the pool. The way they, and the way that they calculate yeah. the day. You know they calculate it, yeah. I don't know if it's a point differential or whatever, but yeah, we drop one. Right. Um strange enough. Anyway, we we the spectating team will not let that deter us. We put in the same effort behind our national team. We know they're gonna put the same effort out to win. Uh listen, quick little note, Kai Jones. Bye. I don't know what's going on with Kai Jones. And I mm. haven't found a story yet from the NBA, official mm. media, mm. from Sports Illustrated, ESPN, any of the top news. I haven't found a story yet that intentionally and carefully in, it attempts to interrogate what we've seen yeah, over I, social media. I know, that, what I, I know what I've heard from people that, that, that um, knew him for years. Yeah. Because you know, at, at one point, he wasn't as tall. He wasn't right. as gifted. He was just a regular little boy. Yeah. You know, so there are some people that I know that grew up with him or know people that grew up with him. And they said he was always different. Yeah. He was always the child that would play by himself, you know, in the sandbox. Everybody else, you know, kind of playing on the switch. Like entertain the yourself. Like yeah. you can talk to yourself and have a little discussion. Yeah. yeah, like he had no problem going on the seesaw and trying to surf on the seesaw. Instead I got of you. trying to get a friend on the other side of the right, seesaw. Right, right, right. He do his best to try to surf and play by himself. Yeah, enjoy his own company. Right. I so, got you. So he was always a bit different. Right. My thing was, my questions were, were these. In the first video, you could see that he was actually dyeing his hair. He had the blue dye on his hands, right? The first thing that came to my mind was, that's not safe. And I wonder if this, if I'm going to say this, but if our, our guy, Kai Jones, is suffering from a little self-induced intoxication because he's been dyeing his own hair and dyeing it incorrectly mm -hmm. a, a, a lot frequently I don't, I don't think i don't think it's to die you know, i mean i do think ultimately like the more he dies his hair and damages his hair he may end up bald but well, i don't i don't i don't think the dye has anything to do with his mindset as people said people said he was always a bit quirky right to me it also looked like you know when you you get a, a bad fever mm -hmm. and you're in a bit of a fugue state yeah 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 but more importantly, what I want to know, one thing I couldn't find in all my research is who is Kai's manager? His mother. There's a whole story about it, you know. I don't want to talk about bit. that because I saw that and I don't know where the story come from. It's true, apparently. People who know him know that his mother is very overbearing. So what Kai needs is a manager. He needs a proper manager. Listen, Charlotte Hornets, be reaching out from the Bahamas. Yeah, man. Support Kai Jones by giving them some technical support. Give him a manager. If he wants his mother to be on his team, cool. But he needs a professional yeah, manager. He a professional because he's manager playing professional get up, sports. Get him up every day. Make sure they take his vitals. Make sure he eats the correct food. Make sure he exercises. Make sure he does all of the uh, media um, 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 showcases that yeah, yeah, he yeah. has to do You know, as it relates to his contract. Make sure that he gets home on time to rest and recover. Right, a proper professional yeah, routine. Professional routine, because he's just doing his own thing. And, you know, he's relying on the gifts that God yeah. gave him. And that ain't going to work all the time. No. You need to hone them. Right. You need to. Even professional athletes need a system to tap into to be able to manage and maximize their own talent. Even Michael Jordan has lift weights. Every day, I mean, what, Steph well, Curry, yeah. Steph Curry's Steph doing... Steph Curry what? lifts weights. Uh -huh. LeBron James lifts weights. They eat correctly. Yeah. Like, I don't care what you believe and what you see on the court. They, they do what's necessary to keep themselves in that particular shape. And Steph Curry's promotion of his, his personal culture, the religious culture, the sports culture, because they're mm -hmm. all tied into one, right? Mm -hmm. That's a big part of mm -hmm. his professional mm -hmm. game. I got discipline. I got dedication. I got commitment. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. faith in my skills, knowing Correct. that I hone them, right? And so, you know, initially people were sort of dissing Steph Curry, but this little Christian boy out here, you know, sign of the cross. But it's a, it's a culture, it's a lifestyle that drives his uh, success on the court. Yeah. All right, another big story. Jazz hits two grand slams. Back-to-back -back games. They sweep the Braves. Did they sleep, sweep the Braves? They do the Braves in. They do the Braves in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Two Grand Slams, 
back-to-back games. But here's the biggest thing. Chisholm also became just the second player in 123 years to both hit a grand slam and steal three bases in the game, accomplishing the feat on Saturday. The only other players to accomplish that feat since 1900 is former All-Star outfielder Mike Cameron, who pulled it off for the Seattle Mariners against the Toronto Blue Jays in 2002. He's also the only player in Marlins history to hit Grand Slam home runs in back-to-back days. Way to go. Chisholm and the Marlins are trying to make... Listen to me, Jazz Chisholm and that jersey. I, I need to get one. Yeah. I need to get one. Like, he is indeed the truth. He's now healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, I... I, I believe he's doing the right thing as well, you know, in terms yeah. of keeping his body healthy. Because I mean, you know, like he made he made he made the major leagues, and you want to stay there, and you want to do your best to 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 put your best foot forward and make sure that the that the team that 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 um, drafted you don't trade you and blah blah blah, and you know, close proximity to the Bahamas. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and I get all of that, but he was trying a little bit too hard to stay. Yeah. yeah, 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 you know, and you don't want to hurt yourself. Yeah. And thankfully, you know, he's, he's back. recovered, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, listen, he's back and playing, playing, um, playing within his own, his own um, abilities. Yeah, the gra- those two grand slams two were grand amazing. Two grand slams are indeed within his ability. He didn't need three grand slams. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, hit two, you good. call it a day, yeah. So listen, yeah. Royal Caribbean International, y'all is dark in Miami because I have a feeling we got a new promotion going on. We need to have a, a, a Jazz Chisholm Jr. Miami Marlins Day on Royal Caribbean International. And then y'all need to give out jerseys. Uh, y'all need to buy a whole bunch of jerseys yeah, and right. give them out and sell them to everybody on the cruise ship on that day. And on that day, y'all got a port in New Providence. So yeah, coordinated. Yeah. On the Jazz Chisholm Marlins Day, you port right. in New Providence. Right. If you're getting off the boat, you could get a jersey because everybody in New Providence wearing a jersey. And then we put it up on the on the big screen and we all sit down and watch the game. Right, because the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of uh, Sports and Youth and Culture, they're going to liaise with Royal Caribbean to ensure. And you can put the game up in the new cruise port and you have mm-hmm. the, in the, um, mm-hmm. what they call that? They just have concerts and parties there now why we can't watch a game. At the amphitheater, right? Yes. Yeah, buddy. Look here. Ministry of Tourism, we got a new promotion on deck. See how I did that? Next batter on deck, huh? Uh-huh. Sports Next batter uh? on deck. Yeah, look okay, you. Jazz Chisholm's foundation, Little League Foundation, starts this Saturday as well. For more information, you can email jazzchismfoundation.org. They plan on working with 300 kids to teach them the fundamentals of baseball and a whole bunch of other things. Somebody say, I want to see Debbie Ray Shikari. I think Debbie could still... Take a whoo, that'd Ooh, be a race, boy. eh? Well, that'd be a race, but uh, uh, Debbie, Debbie, uh, 40, 40, 44, 43, 44. Yeah, man, just look here, she just needs six months of Ganep and Aloe and Cerise. Six months, training. Yeah, six months of training, yeah, yeah, it's all the training, yeah. We got to get out all that, all that uh, chicken in the bag, and then she's been eating since the, since the golden girl. No, she's been eating chicken in the bag. <laughs> Well, listen, everybody eats chicken in the bag. I, I agree with you. Okay, thank you. National, national um, duty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My most exciting story of the day. Yeah? Jones and the Liberty sweep the Mystics. When John Cole Jones was traded to the Liberty, her goal was to win a championship, and she got one step closer, sweeping the Washington Mystics 90 to 85 in yeah. overtime. And it wasn't even that close. Like, like, like the Liberty stopped playing at the end of the fourth. And, and that's what allowed the Mystics to catch up. Okay, I got you, yeah. It wasn't even like, like they slip, slide, and slunk, and, 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 and they caused the game to go to overtime. That was not supposed to happen. Listen, uh, Jones had a stellar night. She was a menace. She finished uh, with her second straight double-double in the series, scoring 19 points, 14 rebounds in 38 minutes. Uh, and nothing more important than the offensive rebound and the two clutch free throws to end. At the end of regulation to force overtime, she shot six from nine from the field, 66.7%, and went seven for eight 
from the free throw line. She also had one steal and three blocks. She filled up the stat sheet. JBR, look here. We need a sponsorship, man. Yeah. JBR, what you doing? Right here, her hand could be one big block. Right this is what I say. Just get the Jonquil packet. Come get the Jonquil special. <laughs> Tell her to man. We throwing up this house got immediately. One. Immediately, in a sweep, we throw it up this house. And that, that one steal came a few seconds remaining in overtime. Uh, the Liberty are going to play the Connecticut Sun. She's playing oh, the old team. team. Hey, but well, listen, she, they, they can beat them. Yeah. They can beat them handily. Good, good. And, and, we, can, and, and we can finally see what we all come to see. The Liberty versus the Aces. Yeah. That, right, that's, and those are the top that's teams. They, they played the, the Commissioner's Cup. Yeah, yeah, that's what everybody wants to see. On another note, how did the um, Caribbean Day go Liberty and New York Liberty? Remember they had a Caribbean yeah. Day? they yeah. in Brooklyn, Caribbean Central. Yeah. I hope that was great. I hope you Bahamians went out and supported the vibe. Yeah, I hope you made some count for this for people. You know, All right. Showed people exactly what a what a good Bahamian song really supposed to sound like. Showed yeah. a quadril dance. And, yeah, bop, bop, bop. You know? Swing, swing your partner. Show okay. them, show these people how to dance professionally. Speaking of which, I don't know if you even have this. Yeah. Uh, Anthony. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. I saw the story. Anthony came to Golden Diamond League. Yeah. Big things. Big things. Anthony Strawn, we forget yeah. you. Yeah. Way to go, girl. Yeah. yeah. Way to go, champion. Third, champion. Third best in the world, Craig. Okay? Like, that's what you have to understand. In the whole world. People, people come with this. Oh, well, you know, she came to her. That's... That was only third. Hey, that's third best in the world. You know how much people try to get into the... Firstly, you have to qualify to be a part of the Diamond League. Yeah. You know, like that's a big deal in and of itself. Just to get there. Just and then you got to gotta compete. Everybody can get there. Then you got to compete. No yeah. man, No man. But she's third best of the best. And listen, uh, mm -hmm. Devin Shelton conducted a free hurdles camp for girls this weekend. Just... She was here to celebrate, we got to say this part. She was here to celebrate her mother's 60th birthday, okay. Laura Shelton, birthday mom. Yes, yes, most definitely. We say thank you for this effort, Devin, in supporting the development of local talent. Exciting nights of amateur boxing in Grand Bahama. You guys check out the Tribune for that story. Grand Bahama doing, doing boxing? Yeah, man. Yeah. In fact, remember all the stories we've done about the, the, the boxing federation? Mm -hmm. Grand Baham has, has been on every team. I think Grand Baham has been on every team we've sent out to international competition. Okay. I mean, I know they're good for basketball and... Um, Pokey. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're good for that. You know, yeah, you know. They're good for that. Yeah. You all could be on the junior Pickling, reserve team. Pickle and conk and thing. Like, yeah. they... they, they, they and mayo and... The, and mayo and conk salad. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't know they was good for anything. It's a, it's a basketball and those and those couple of awkward awkward dishes. And broadcasting. Yes. I could be oh yeah. Grand oh, Bahama, yeah. they got this they get what's it it remind me of um Paul Robeson. Oh yeah. From South Pacific. They got the voice, man. Oh we wish him for yeah, yeah. years. They got that voice. For years. Producer, take us to a break. I want you to come back with that theme music. I like NFL, but maybe you can play nine again, because they three and oh, and nobody ah, could dispute. Boy. Nobody could watch, dispute that they're watch, leading the league. You see my big nine of watch on today, though. Okay, good. Nobody could dispute they leading the league at 3-0. and All the rest of us here with a measly 2-0. and Don't mind, we ain't play our third game yet. We're giving them that. 3-0, and 49ers. You're on the clock. Sports Friday with Eric Sawyer III. Going to a break. We'll be right back. Created Events and Marketing presents Becoming, a transformative women's empowerment summit that will take place on September 24th at the National Training Agency located on Gladstone Road at 3 p.m. Phenomenal speakers include Dequessa Dean, Simone Bow, Shirley Pinder, Marissa Mason-Smith, and Dr. Nyambi Campbell-Dean. Not to mention a flaunted fashion show segment hosted by Miss Phyllis Garraway. Tickets are $50 and can be purchased at the Nassau Guardian or Essence Med Spa, number 15 Bradley Street, Palmdale. Part Pro Proceeds will be donated to the Jenny Dean Caring and Sharing Cancer Support Group. 
Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Always on the go? Miss the show? You can now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Drop me on the beat. Bang, bang, Niner Gang. 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 Thank you, producer. Uh huh. Thank you. I couldn't give you all of that. I went in the break. I zoomed into the production room to ask the producer if he could find any song for the Miami Dolphins. And this break and tell me, Under the Sea from the Little Mermaid is a good song, Miss Green. That's all they need. I think y'all are coming up against me in here, man. They don't need no more than that. Good morning, Mr. Sawyer. Let's run through quickly week two. Thursday night's game, Eagles versus Vikings, 34 and 20. Really yeah, yeah. Colts pulled it out, 31 to 20. They they did. They did. Finally, finally on the winning side. Impressive win. Tex- they, um, they shouldn't win too much this year. Mind you, they played versus the Texans, so I'm not they, that impressed. Well, yeah, I mean, there's two rookie quarterbacks going up against each other. They're the future. All right. Andy Richardson and C.J. Stroud. Okay. They're the future of the league, yeah. Falcons versus Packers. Falcons took out the Packers 25-24. Of course, Rams. That's a pretty good game. Got trounced by the 49ers. Of course they did. What else is there to do except be trounced by the 49ers? What else is there to do? You know it was a good game? Cowgirls, week five, you know. Oh, sorry. Sorry to hear, but Trayvon Diggs, y'all Cowgirl fans. Sorry, sorry to hear. Well, he got injured. ACL tear in practice yesterday. Out for ah. the season. That's their top cornerback. Oh, and, no. You know, I... I firmly believe in beating a team wholly, you know, not because of injury yeah. and, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, we've beaten them wholly the last two years anyway. Yeah, anyway. We don't feel good beating them when you know, know their star players yeah, are out. you know. All right. And we have to take advantage of the fact that Trayvon Diggs ain't there. Now, I can be honest with you. I watched um, about a quarter on and off of the Jaguars versus Chiefs games. That had to have been the best game all Sunday because... The Jaguars was killing the Chiefs on defense, man. On, on defense, yeah. Yeah, man, it's a defensive struggle. You like a defensive game. But when I... No, oh, no, 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 no. So that's not uh, what it no, is. No, that's fine. Some people the like Jag- a defensive game. The Jaguars were killing right. the Chiefs on defense, but the Chiefs stayed outscoring them. Yeah. Yeah. Jaguars yeah, just couldn't turn away. anything over on the offensive end. No, no, and you couldn't get no turnovers. And then eventually the Chiefs outplayed their defense as well. Yeah. yeah just wear them down. Yeah. I thought the Chiefs wasn't going to make it. I, I really thought the Chiefs wasn't going to make it, but that was a good game. Okay, Titans versus Chargers. Titans pulled it out. I'm surprised. Even though it's only by three good. points. That was pretty good. That was a pretty good game. Saints versus Panthers, 20-17. Buccaneers versus Bears, 27-17. Did Buccaneers a 2-0? Oh, I am. the Bears season finished. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Sorry, there Bears. Aren't, there aren't any Bears fans in this country under the age of 50 anyway, because all of them still live in... With the, the fridge. With, yeah, yeah, they still living in 1985. I remember them days. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all. Just like, just like dolphin, like hardcore no, no, dolphin it's not fans, say, okay. still believe in 1972. So and that's and that's what we hold. That's what we hang our hat on. That we're, we're the only unbeaten team in the NFL history. And blah 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 blah. You haven't been to the Super Bowl since 1985. 84, actually. I mean, you hurt my heart. Patriots got trounced by the dolphin. I just have to repeat it. 24 to 17. A whole. Field goal. Yeah. An extra point. We mm-hmm. beat them by because we're good. Lions are going to face the Falcons. Lions are 0 and 2. Falcons coming in 2 and 0. Oh. Vikings 0 and 2. Chargers 0 and 2. Dolphins 2 and 0 oh playing the Broncos. But the Chargers really shouldn't be 0 oh and 2. They really shouldn't be. They really, they, 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 I mean, they dropped the ball against the Sardians and they've had the lead in the fourth quarter of both games. And, and they, I don't know. I don't they're know. just failing. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So we know it's that fourth quarter. Team, what they call it? What's the the, the um, 
specialty play. Mm-hmm. The fourth mm-hmm. quarter specialty play team, they, they, they need they to step it up. They need to step, yeah. Okay, Ravens versus Colts. They have a special team for me. In week three, 2-0 versus Colts, who are 1-1. One one. One. Mm-hmm. 49 is you're playing the Giants. We played the Giants. Right, you all beat them. I yeah. forget. It's 3-0. Yeah. I wanted to forget that. Yeah. Saints going up against the Packers. Saints are 2-0. and oh, I'm surprised. Packers 1-1. Yeah, one the Saints and one. are a very surprising 2-0 and oh team, but they're doing what's necessary. They have a very ferocious defense. Yeah. They have better defense than people give them credit for. Yeah. I, they, they gave Tom Brady fits when Brady was playing with the Bucs, you know. Yeah. Well, see, if, if, if this has become a quarterback's game, right, mm-hmm. this season, coming into the season, if this is a quarterback's game, then I'm looking for, for defensive plays. I'm looking to see what the defensive teams bring to the field this year because the only way to respond to a quarterback is with that type of defense. Mm-hmm. By talking about, mm-hmm. like, remember the Steelers defense? They yeah, yeah, Steelers the defense person. will mash you up and go score. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with Troy Palomalu and, right. and those boys in the 90s. Like, they didn't even want to give their yeah. offensive teams time to do nothing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the quarterback for the Steelers back then was like Neil O'Donnell and Cordell Stewart. This was before Big Ben came there. Yeah, yeah. So they had to rely on their defense. You know, they had regular quarterback play. Yeah, but I mean that was I, that was tremendous play, mm-hmm. and that's the type of football mm-hmm. that I like. Yeah, I mean I appreciate yeah. the throw-in game, right? Um, but when those like de- smash them out defensive games, give me the action, <laughs> give me the action. Okay, Commanders are doing really well they too. Are. And oh, they are, they are. They're going up against the Bills. Got text said it says, um, "How come the running back has become unpopular?" Well, because they got a quarterback game, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the league has become more thrown than anything. I mean, you had you had running backs back in the day. Yeah, Emmett Smith, Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, uh, Walter Payton, uh, Edgerin James. You had you had you had big name, you know, and running backs that were doing their thing. Right, Patriots are at zero and two. I saw a nice meme yesterday. The boy said, "Look here." What did he say? He said, I, he said, I play with Legos and I, I found a wife. And that's harder. He said, that's what harder to do than winning a game against Bill Be- Belichick. Bill Belichick. Like, I, I, was, I was shocked that the, that the Dolphins won so handily on yeah. Sunday night. Um, but, I mean, the game came down to one, one final play called by the refs, but, but the Dolphins were in control of the whole game. Yeah. yeah. Is it time I'm, for the I'm Patriots sure. to switch to a different type of game? Are they still trying to play a Tom Brady game five, six years after he gone? It's headed by Tom Brady's old coach. Yeah. But they need to I, switch to something else. They need to switch to another mode of, mode it, of offense. The Texas, it's time for them to bring their running game back? Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, and that's another thing now. These quarterbacks now, they run. Right, I see Mahomes. Yeah. Mahomes runs. Josh Allen runs. Um, yeah. Even a rookie quarterback, uh, Anthony Richardson, he had a concussion last week in the game against the Texans. Because he, he decided runs, to run. Yeah. Uh, um, Hertz runs. Uh, our quarterback, you know, um, um, uh, Mr. Purdy, he runs. Dak runs. Uh, Daniel Jones runs. Quarterbacks run now. So why pay a running back to do what a quarterback could just do because you can protect your water. Because I remember when back in the day, Dan I, Marino, he ain't running, yeah, Peyton Manning, he ain't running, and in fact, Tim Kelly, he ain't Tom you Brady, could, he ain't running. You could watch a quarterback cussing because he know the, the, the um protection from his offensive line right. is not there, right? And now I gotta go run, no man, I ain't trying to get out there, I just want to pass this ball, sit there and pass ball. All right, what you think is going to be the most exciting game in this lineup for week three? Who else playing? Uh, Chiefs playing the Bears, Buccaneers playing <laughs> the Eagles. A That's a loss for the Bears. Look here, Buccaneers playing the Eagles, 2-0 and versus 2-0. Uh, and surely the Eagles could beat the Buccaneers. Surely the Eagles can beat the Buccaneers. I hope they, I hope they don't beat the Buccaneers. I hope the Bucs win really well. Into it. Just because, you know, I just, I just like to see Eagles fans with a sour, sour face. <laughs> Cardinals That's versus Cowboys. Ca- Cardinals are 0-2 and two for the season so far. Yeah, it should be another blowout win for the Cowboys. Packers versus Saints. Saints. I got you. Saints. And you think the Jets can take the Patriots? No. All right. Here's a question. When when does our remember when does our bye week start? How many more weeks do we have until the bye uh, week starts? It's what a month left. We're in week three now. So we got about okay. four more games. Yeah, four more games before teams start to 
take a break. Right. And that break is to give him a rest, right? right. Who you think ain't going to make it to the break? Who you think may suffer a serious injury before they could Boy, get... And which the last team two think? or three uh, Monday nights yeah. have been serious injuries. Um, two, two Monday nights. Uh, Aaron Rodgers... Uh, last week, who played? Who played Monday last week? Who played Monday last week? I forget who played. Who played? Eagles versus no, no, no. Last no. game, I think was it no, Broncos no, versus Commanders. Last game? No, 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 no. The Monday night game. I forget who played Monday. But they always have these serious season-ending injuries on a Monday night game. Is it because of the lens? Um, I have a. It may be. It. it well, players, well, really well and truly, it's the beginning of the season, and you know, and this, this, this goes hand in hand with just um, being in shape, but not being in NFL shape. Yeah. As yet. Like, if you could get through the first three to four, maybe five weeks of the season. Yeah. You know, as your body gets more in tune to football modes and having other people hit it. Because, you know, in practice, you know, like you hitting a dummy. Yeah. And you hitting your teammates. And, yeah, you might have a little scrimmage with your teammates, but it's not the same as... As getting hit somebody on a Monday else. night. Yeah, you know, who really want to hit you. Like, not like... Yeah. Hit you to stop the play, you know? And in it, front of the camera. Right. Like, look yeah. at our game last night. We didn't play hard, you know. No man, no man, don't go out there and get yourself injured, man. We know we better than the Giants. Just go out there and win the game. We don't need to destroy nobody, you know. Like the Cowboys did the Giants. No need to destroy them. Just beat them. Yeah. Call it a day. But but that's the one thing that the Cowgirls good for every year, you know. Every year they have a blowed win. Every year they have one blowed win. Twenty twenty one they beat the Falcons forty to three. Forty three to three. Twenty twenty two they beat the Vikings forty to three. Like, they do this every year. They blow the team badly. And so this and, is it. And now the fans, oh, boy, we them boys. We back. We this. We that. Then you play the Niners. <laughs> Producer, play the music. You know the one where we, we play. Ah, yes. We get Pittsburgh. the Dolphins line up in the ocean to go to, go to war. Play yeah. that one, Producer. Yeah, yeah. The this. Pittsburgh and the, and the Browns game. The, the, the Steelers and Browns. That's, That's right. Game. That's the game. That's the game whereby... Um, um, oh, I forget his name right now. But anyway, on the running back for the Browns, yeah, tore everything in his knee. Everything. MCL, ACL, LCL. Everything. Completely all the way around. His kneecap was in the back of his knee. Aye. Mm-hmm. Cool finish. Nick Chubb, one of the one of the um one of the um premier running backs in the league who was fighting to get running backs paid more money. And this may be a career ending. That's what I'm about to say. Yeah, he might be in a blazer next year in the boot for CBS. You know what? We Honestly. Need, we need to get uh, Dr. Kent Bazard, uh, a sports physician, right? We need to get him on so we could talk about these injuries, right? Like yeah, maybe man. take a spotlight on on jazz, mm-hmm. you know, a series of mm-hmm. injuries, and then a spotlight on, on, on American football. Yeah, it, it, it is indeed a violent sport, and people say that, you know, Omega Fitzpatrick, um, it, it seemed like a dirty play, but when he launched to, to, um, to uh, stop Chubb, yeah. Chubb's leg wasn't initially there at the time. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a freaky, freaky, bang, bang play. Um, Chubb was very much, you know, emotional, because when you... See, his kneecap was in, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. was behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember I broke back. my foot. Yeah, yeah, I broke my foot. Was in the back. No, his kneecap. It swung the all the way around, yeah. It swung all the way around. So, so which means that there was no ligaments there stopping it yeah. from getting in the back. Wee. Wee. I just going to ice up my knee just what because. Up? I just, it just, just, yeah, man. just because. Yeah, just out of respect. Yeah. Yeah. In honor of. Yeah. Our boy. So, so, it is Monday night games. Like, you just have to get to the point of week five, week six of the season because, you know, it's not really uh, attrition at this time. It's just, it's just general rust from yeah, the Yeah, knocking, knocking off all the rust. Yeah, yeah that's all. Ah, uh, boy. This is, like Usain Bolt said, I trained, what, 20 years? I trained 20, 20 years mm-hmm. for nine seconds. Yeah. Right? And the same thing with football. Yeah, they trained total. all year. And they train all week for that mm-hmm. that, that one, one game, game. Mm-hmm. and everything is about not just get yeah, a preparation and protecting the body mm-hmm. and maximizing the body's potential. Yeah, yeah. That's why we just beat the Giants last night. We could have put a forty burger on them. We could have put a fifty burger on them. For what? It's, it's unnecessary. It's game three. We yeah. let you beat thirty to twelve in the fourth quarter. What we what we doing anything else? Like we put in Sam Donald. We put in our number two quarterback with like five minutes left in the fourth. All right. So Listen, why do anything? Just before we leave the show today, Mr. Sawyer, yeah. um, I got a notice to read. Go on. But before I get there, somebody asked, what did Kai do? 
it's not what like what Kai did. Kai had a series of social media posts where he seemed to be behaving erratically. Yeah. Right? Um, there's no, you don't see him doing anything illegal, right? You don't see him using no, drugs. You don't no, see him none, none. consuming alcohol. You don't none, see any evidence of that in the, in the videos. Just very erratic behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and some would, some would say unprofessional for a professional NBA player, right? I can't remember, man. These but, fellas born in like 01, you know. Yeah, they are, like, they are children on. and they need managers. Oh, they're 2000. Like they're just born. Yeah, they need management, so professional that's... management on top of that. Okay, so here we go as we end the show. Mr. So, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you as you well. You fired me up. Yeah. For the next Football Dolphins week. win, we got to go 3 and 0. Oh, sardines, sardines, win. Sardines. That's sardines. okay. I like sardines, buddy. Sardines. sardines taste better than dolphin. I've never had a dolphin, I'll be honest with you. There? Yeah. Condolence. Even though you all try to slaughter us every week, I have not. I had know. dolphin last, last year. <laughs> Why we eat the dolphins last yeah, year? Yes, so let me hey, read this on, notice from on. The Guardian. Calling all junior and senior high school students. Uh, the deadline has been extended for the Play-Doh Alpha Design Enter, uh, sorry, Design Essay Competition. All you have to do is write a strong and convincing essay on the topic, what does going digital mean to you? For junior high students, word limit, a thousand words. So senior high students, 1,500 words. Email your essay along with your name, your school, your grade level, as well as your parents' contact information to alpha at platoalpha.com by September the 30th. The winners will be announced on Guardian Radio next month. The winner for each category walks away with a brand new iPad. Again, the deadline has been extended to September 30th. Bob, it's the Plato Alpha Essay Competition, powered by Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Something to do with your children this weekend, junior high students, senior high students. Producer, we all out of time? Let's take one call. Good morning, caller. 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 I guess they're gone. These, these Dolphins fans, Mr. Sawyer. Yeah, they're Sardines fans ready to say something to me. Yeah, just like them she-girls, them cowgirls, y'all are still girls. Where, where do you oh. get this language from? Good morning, caller. Good morning. Yeah, look here, you got 30 seconds. I need all of that. Good uh, stuff. Sir, thank you, Mr. Green. Sir, sir. Hey. In a nutshell, what's going on with Buddy? Sound like he think I'm up the contract up, but they ain't giving him what he asking for. Yeah. He getting it? No, uh, he can be traded. Okay, and what is they can treat? They treating him right. He getting the money. What he deserve? What's seven? Do he want to be traded? Can, can, I, I, I like it. Listen, one, one last thing: how we can get a game like how they do in England and London, but maybe with the Dolphins or someone to play here, even if it's an exhibition. You game. mean like how they do the, um, yeah. the college? Yeah, I love this person. How does the Bahamas Cup? What you suggest the Bahamas Cup? No, we do the try. See if we could ever get that do in the future. I'll hang up and listen. Thanks. Yeah. Well, that's thirty seconds for true. Yeah, boy, boy. Uh, I saw the buddy. I'll talk yeah. right. I know he healed. He, he, healed. Hey, trust me, he got family. They can correct you. Look so here. I get you, please. You don't watch nothing. <laughs> Next time I just can call him Buddy the Yeah. Right? Buddy, 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 buddy the Bayman. Yeah, but there um, you go. He, he has gotten paid his first major contract. Remember, he has a deal uh, four or five years, a hundred and something million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's gotten his money. Um, it's up for renewal. Um, up for extension, I should say. Yeah. And um, and the Pacers, um, they don't they don't foresee that uh, buddy on their team is, is, is making them any better. So he's on the trading block. Wow, buddy with the mo with almost the most three-pointers this season? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. See how fickle your yeah, life listen, but in NBA it. is a business. Yeah, Dwayne without Wade, a doubt. Dwayne Wade said he learned that when the Heat did not re-sign him. And this boy was bad. It was bad. bad. I mean, he had to go play for the Bulls and then the Cavaliers for a minute, and then he was traded back to the Heat. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and and Dwayne Wade is bad. I mean, this played better, almost better than Kobe. He was so upset. He 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 bought a minority stake in the Utah Jazz. He's actually a part owner of the Utah Jazz. That's how you do it. That's yeah. how you do yeah, it. He had to learn business. I was waiting to see some more talks about where he could potentially go, but I haven't seen anybody talk about where he could potentially uh, go yet. Nowhere as yet. I mean, of course, you know, Laker fans would love to see him. Now, let me ask you, let me ask you something. Go, but the problem is, AD don't like Buddy. 
AD traded. AD made sure that Buddy was traded to the Hold Kings. Hold on, you mean he he away from the Lakers? Yeah. Who can't score no points? Yeah, man. And break his ankle every two weeks? Yeah. He don't Listen, like. He don't producer, like Buddy. play the music. We gotta go. He don't like Buddy, so I don't think he's. He'll ever come there because Buddy was supposed to come there two years ago. That's all the talks Westbrook. was. When they got Westbrook. Yeah. There. You see? But, but, but for AD, like who don't have no ankles? AD don't like Buddy. Anyway, I hope all of this isn't about the Bahamas national team. No, man. This is before because, you know, um, Buddy, was, Buddy, was the, um, Buddy was the national player of the year when he first, when he first came, out of, um, came out of college. He went mm-hmm. to school in Oklahoma. He was a college player of the year. He was the baddest thing ever. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. Anyway, buddy, don't watch nothing. We see your talent. Buddy Where, Bahamas. Wherever you go, we support you, buddy. You know how to go. Buddy Bahamas. Yeah, you know uh-huh. how to go. Anyway, let's, let's thank you, producer. There. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer, for the little extended time. Yeah, thank no you, problem. Papa. Thank you, Papa. You guys have a wonderful day, Guardian Radio. You have a wonderful weekend too, Aaron. Yes. Yeah. I will do. I'm working on this body because they need some big bodies on the <laughs> women's <laughs> soccer somebody. team. Somebody. Hey, somebody. Yeah, man. The girl's <laughs> doing well. We're going to help them do better. You guys have a great day. We're out of here. Like Ric Flair. Have a great Woo! day. Cause we're the Miami Dolphins.